What's up everybody, Tom here with another video. In today's video, we'll be discussing everything to do with the stock markets around the world right now. We'll also be taking a look at our technical analysis levels for the S&P 500, NASDAQ, Bitcoin, Tesla, AMC, and others to really dial down into those timeframes and to see the price action and the movements that are occurring. This week's all about Jerome Powell and of course the FOMC. What happens before then? Stay tuned. Well guys, as we saw in that front screener, it was mostly a sea of green, slight green yesterday ahead of this FOMC, which happens on Wednesday in America. And you can see here that we did have some selling in the morning, followed by a little bit more selling in that first couple of hours, and then it was some strong movement. And in our video on the weekend, we talked about how the market had broken past that long leg doji and was showing strength into this meeting. It looks like that's going to continue to happen and we may even reach like a 4,000 on the S&P 500 before the meeting occurs on Wednesday. NASDAQ up 1.32%, SPX up 0.8%, and then we actually had the Russell doing the worst for the day, only up 0.54%. That's a little bit of a decline on how well it's usually been doing. In the sectors, the two value sectors were down, that's finance and energy, and we had strong movements out of the technology consumer discretionary and actually the real estate sector. So maybe the real estate sector is starting to heat up a little bit in these markets right now. It's been very weak for some time. Okay, well, let's get started straight away in the technical analysis and we'll get started with this volatility index or VIX and you'll notice straight away it's sitting on the 20. Now I've been very bullish off buying VIX at the 20 several times before, but this time is a little bit different and I'll explain why guys. One of the reasons is we have a series of lower spikes coming into it. So each time it's hit that 20, it's spiked up. This time, some volatility. This time, some extreme volatility. This time, some volatility again. What do we know about markets? We know that March is kind of like a whip sorry month that doesn't necessarily do that much. We also know we've got the FOMC press conference, so it makes sense that volatility is coming down to this level ahead of a key bit of news. But April is traditionally a good month in the stock markets. Now with a series of these lower peaks coming through, I'm not so keen on buying the support straight away. I'd like to see more from the markets, either it hitting a key resistance, or there being a trend line like we've seen before. And we'll go through that later throughout the video. But yeah, the VIX is hitting the 20. I'm not so excited about it like I was before. We'll have to wait and see for more information. Let's go to the dollar index here and it hit the level we thought it would on the stream yesterday. 91, 95, 96 area was reached. It then found resistance straight away. We talked about how a breach and a close above this level would expose 92.5, 93 and that continuation of the bull run. But while it sits in here, there's just no direction for the dollar index close below this area over here, then it gets direction to the downside. That's the 91.37. We're getting a sequence that is showing us bearish intentions. But while it stays in this range, I'm neutral into it, and I would expect it to be neutral ahead of the FOMC as well. Many of these pairs will be neutral or sitting in ranges right into that announcement, and then they'll find their next direction depending on what the announcements are. Bitcoin, something that people are very concerned about right now. Look, we closed under our key critical bullish signal, which has been the 20 exponential moving average. We closed here below, that signaled further selling. We saw selling into the 50. The 50 is currently holding up, but you did see just a close recently and it's starting to look like Bitcoin wants to turn around and potentially move down to the 50 2000. That's where you've got this massive level of previous resistances that should act as some heavy supports and a 200 simple moving average. So Bitcoin, it's, it's consolidating. Let's go down to the one hour. You'll notice it is consolidating, but I'm not bullish or bearish on it at this level from a TA perspective. Now that we've got more structure here, possibly it closes above here. You can start to think about 60,000 again but I don't really like the 15 minute or one hour timeframes. I've told you that before on this channel. I'm big on the four hour, daily, eight hour, weekly timeframes to really give you much clearer percentage chances of success. I could see Bitcoin to 52. I could also see it to 60. I'm considering it fairly neutral while it holds in this range. And the longer it holds in this range, when eventually it does break out, 
you'll know that that is a good signal. So we'll watch this throughout the stream tonight. And if you're interested, come and join us for our live pre-market streams for the US market where we cover cryptocurrencies, stocks, and everything else around the markets right now. Gold, what's going on there? Well, here we're under 15 minutes, not gonna help us that much. Let's go to the four hour, 17.30. For the gold bulls, things are looking better. We've got bullish pickoffs off this level, 2050 exponential moving average cross here happening right now, which is excellent news for people in the markets. And we've got a horizontal resistance as well. So we've got 1740, 1740 resistance, resistance. This is a key critical zone that I would say if we can close above, we'll signal 1760 for gold bulls. But until we get that, we cannot be sure. We're still in a downtrend on the larger time frames. We're chopping it up, creating structure and range down here after hitting those extreme lows of 1676. So gold's neutral, just like dollar index. And it makes sense because when dollar index moves, gold moves and vice versa. Silver is very, very similar, but silver's showing a little bit more strength so we've talked about the trend line here, which comes off these lows. I'll draw that in for you now, just to show you this trend line. So here you go. There's the trend line and where it's broken through. I'm really more looking at this previous peak being this 26441 now, and these 2050 exponential moving averages on the daily. See how they're acting to really create resistance for this market. Neutral again on silver, tough trading ahead of the announcement. I expect it to get all better after the announcement again on Wednesday. Let's now go over to GME and AMC. What's going on there? Well, AMC hit the 14, guys. So we said every $2 was gonna be really the structure points. Yesterday, we we opened strong. The 30 minutes set the tone. The first 30 minutes were very strong. Bullish pressure came through. 14 was reached. And then we just basically held that area. So we've been pretty correct here on the levels for AMC and GME throughout this bull run. Now 14 is the zone that we need to close above. And if we can do that, we move into the 16 area, a next resistance. So every $2 here for AMC, if it cannot breach 14 correctly on maybe a one hour chart, then we can't get 16. And as you'll see on the left-hand side here, GME did not suffer the same way that AMC did. AMC was 14 bullish, GME at the same point, 220 bearish went down to as low as 206 i don't know why it stopped at 206 exactly maybe you could claim it's because of these peaks over here but it'll be very important that gme holds a green day in the stock trading session tomorrow because if it doesn't then you're starting to create negative sentiment and as we know both of these trades here rely on sentiment only a few negative days can completely take the sentiment out of the market and create a really big pressure selling event I noticed this halted a few times yesterday in terms of GME. That always creates a bad sentiment. Halt happens, comes out, usually sells off more due to fear and panic around those halts. A lot of people still don't understand that the market will halt once it moves a certain percentage throughout that session. So GME and AMC, interesting, not actually following each other right now. AMC strong, GME weak. Let's take a look at Tesla. So for Tesla bulls, Great news, we closed above 700 guys. We got a 707, we predicted that this could be certainly something that would happen yesterday. Everything was looking good. We got above 707, where is the next target? 720 is gonna be a resistance area. I'll show you why, previous resistance over here, resistance recently, and a 50 exponential moving average. We close above that, it is good times for the bulls. I don't really see much things on the left-hand side stopping Tesla then from moving up and trying to approach that 800 level. Now that'll be good for NEO traders, that'll be good for really any EB car manufacturer traders, but yeah, 720 is the next target here. Watch the NASDAQ technicals, which we'll talk about in a few moments, and you'll notice that there's a lot of synergies there, but 700 close above is bullish and things are looking good on Tesla. After the market, I didn't check the price, but I'm sure it was basically sitting around flat I think based on what I saw. S&P 500, strong day, 39.68, new all-time highs. So we're witnessing history right here, guys. History has been witnessed, 39.68. Our trend line remains intact. So if that was to move up right now, let's say it went through straight direct 
after the FOMC, we'd actually be hitting a 4,050. Now I'm thinking that we could reach around 4,000 before the announcement. The bullish pressure continues here. The further and the faster we move away from this 20 exponential moving average on things like the four hour, etc., the more we open ourselves up for a little bit of a correction or a little bit of a move back into that. So like a dip that moves into it. But 4,000 looks to be in the sights and I think after stopping before 4,000, I mentioned this several times on the channel, if you have a market that's reaching a critical resistance point, let's say it's Bitcoin, let's say it's this stock market here, and when it reaches just before and then sells off, when it goes for a new high, it tends to try to bust that high. So 4,000, while it is a massive psychological level, it really looks like it wants it and that it's gonna do it. Look even here yesterday, four hour, rejection pin or hammer off that point, finding support down in the lows here at the 39.30. It's all looking pretty bullish right now for the S&P 500. We'll continue to cover this in our pre-market sessions and in our daily videos. NASDAQ, a little bit different. So NASDAQ is still underneath where it was only a month ago. Now we have our strong resistance. That's the 13,300 zone. I do expect selling pressure for a lot of hyper growth stocks and a lot of stocks in general to come through here. All the price action yesterday was good. You'll notice here, lots of bullish four hours came through and those two came through the session. Now, once we snap this little top off on the smaller time frame, we move towards the 13,300. But more importantly, where did the daily close yesterday, guys? It closed above 13,000, above these two moving averages, the 20 and the 50. So NASDAQ's looking bullish. It's going towards that 13.3. If it goes to the 13.3, what happens to the S&P 500? It probably gravitates towards the 4,000. All eyes will be on Jerome this week. We'll be covering, of course, the markets for you as always. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you give a like to this video if you enjoy it. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you at the pre-market streams. Bye for now, guys. Good luck today.